The Three Bears of Galatians chapter 6. Now, I want to first uh, start off by saying, when I say the three bears of Galatians chapter 6, we are not talking about the, the childhood storybook of Goldilocks and the three bears. That is by far not what we are talking about here. But we're, we will look at the three bears that are, are present in the uh, book of Galatians chapter 6. And we're going to read the, the scriptures. We're actually going to be reading the whole chapter. Uh, my wife will be reading the whole chapter. Uh, so let's look at this. Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 18. Brethren, if a man be, over, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Messiah. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, Elohim is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. For he that sows to his flesh, shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit, shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. You see how, Lord, a letter I have written unto you with my own hand. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Messiah. For neither they themselves are circumcised keep the law but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. But Yahweh forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Master Yahweh Messiah, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Messiah Yahweh neither circumcision avails anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, Peace be on them in mercy and upon the Israel of Yahweh. From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of Master Yahweh. Brethren, the grace of our Master Yahweh Messiah be with your spirit. Amen. Okay. Now, did you catch the three bears here in the book of Galatians chapter 6? Where are those three bears? Bear ye one another burdens, in chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Bear your own burdens, in verses 3 through 5. And finally, bear the marks of Adonai Yahweh Messiah, and that's in verses 11 through the end of the chapter. So we see three bears here. Now these th three bears are intimately involved in our walk as children of Yahweh. Let's start looking at these three bears. We're going to break each one down and look at them. Bear ye one another's burdens. That's the first one. Let's look at a scripture here. That it shows how we bear one another's burdens. Psalms chapter 142 verses 1 through 4. I cried unto Yahweh with my voice. And with my voice unto Yahweh that I make supplication. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. In the way wherein I walked, have they privily laid a snare for me. I looked on my right hand and beheld. But there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. 
Wow, what a sad state of events here in verse 4. What a sad verse. No man cared for my soul. There was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. Such a sad verse. No one would bear his burdens with him. The scriptures tell us that we're supposed to bear one another's burdens over and over again. Let's also look at Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For Yahweh thy Elohim, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. So we see in scripture right here in the book of Deuteronomy that Yahweh was bearing the burdens of the people. He said that for them to be strong, that he wouldn't fail them nor forsake them. In other words, what he's doing is he's bearing the burden of this people here. Okay, and one more. Matthew 28, verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. This is a beautiful verse because not only does it say that Yahweh Messiah is going to be with us to the end of the age. Imagine that as a, as a beautiful thing. Yahweh Messiah, he'll be with us to the end of the age for all time until we, we're in glory, we're in heaven. He is going to be there with us to help be, uh, bear our burdens. Now, if Yahweh loves my brother and Messiah, I must bear with him as well. And a mutual burden bearing, we should be, we should seek to help those who have gone astray. Not as a way of demonizing them, but as a loving way to bring them back in alignment. Like setting a bone back in place after it's broke. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fall, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Now, where, where in this scripture does it say we need to demonize them because they fell? It does not say that at all. As a matter of fact, it says just the opposite. It's to restore such a one in the spirit with meekness. Why? Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. The scripture is showing that we need to bear one another's burdens. If someone falls, a brother or sister falls, we should be able to help them up, to lift them up, to, to encourage them to continue on. From sincerity of concern and welfare for the other person, we just see this pattern uh, in, in nature. Geese, when, when they work together to help each other to fly longer, fly safer, and even work together to help other, another through illness until they can return to the flock. Believers are told to be ready to help burden the load. That's amazing. Geese. Geese, they help each other to get to where they're going, even in illness. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Okay, wow, look at that right away. It said, look on the man, not on your own things, but the man, uh, things of others. In other words, what it's saying is we should care more for other people than we do our actual self. We should be able to, to care more for our brother and our sister than we do our actual self. Now let's look at the next scripture. Chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Messiah Yahweh. Okay, wow. Let this mind... Now notice, this is right after the, the previous scripture, to, to look on the other things of others. Let this mind, what mind, the, the thinking about others more than ourselves, be in you, which was also in Yahweh Messiah. There's two things here. We need to, to, to make sure that our mind is like Yahweh, that we're carrying, we're bearing the burdens of our brother or our sister. 
And notice here also it says, which was in Yahweh Messiah. Because how much more of a person was there ever to bear the burdens of us uh, and our sins? And that would be Yahweh Messiah. One more. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Follow me. Be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love us brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. Wow, look at that. One mind having compassion one for another, and love is brethren, being pitiful and courteous. Does this sound like we're trying to demonize somebody? No, this sounds like we're trying to bear the burdens of our brother or our sister. And we're trying to lift them up and encourage them to continue on in this race. This is so beautiful here. Be courteous, be pitiful towards your brother or your sister. Now what is the second burden? Bear your own burdens. Galatians chapter 6 verse 5. For every man shall bear his own burden. Okay, now not only are we supposed to bear the burdens of others, we're supposed to bear our own burdens. We're not supposed to bear, put our burden, purposely put our burdens on someone else. We have to bear our own burdens. Okay, and we see that here. Now, what does the word burden here mean? Burden is the word fortition, for, for, fortition, which means something carried, that is, cargo of a ship. So it's a great load that we have to carry. Sometimes we have a big burden that we have to carry. But we often we don't have to carry that because Yahweh takes it for us. But in Scripture, we're supposed to bear our own burdens. Okay? Now. Now, in chapter 6, verse 5, we're to bear our own burdens. The individual load we each are given. We need to help those in time of tragedy or loss. But in each day, we're to bear our own burdens. Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be like unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Okay, so we see here, this is the story of the, the ten virgins. We see five, five of the, the uh, vir virgins here bear their own burden. They had their own oil. They made sure that they had oil for their lamps. Then you had the five foolish that did not bear their own burden. They did not go out and get their own uh, oil for their lamps. And they did not have oil. If you continue reading in this story, it tells, tells, it, tells you how the five foolish versions asked the five wise versions to, can we have some of your, your uh oil and they said not they couldn't because they wouldn't have enough for themselves so they had to go out and buy their own own oil or go get their own oil but this is talking here about how they didn't bear their own burdens they didn't carry their own oil you see i can't borrow from another person's righteousness I can't go to the judgment seat of Messiah and borrow from the righteousness of someone else. First of all, the, uh, the, right, the, burden, the judgment seat of Messiah, we're going to be there by ourselves. We're not going to be able to say, well, can I borrow, your, borrow something from you? Some righteousness from you? Because we're going to be there by ourselves. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of the Messiah, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Okay, we see here, all must appear before the judgment seat of Messiah. Done, uh, to receive the things done in his body. You see, we're not going to have a brother or a sister or a mom or dad or anyone else there. We're going to be there by ourselves. To, uh, to, 
to be judged by ourself. Okay? Now, Revelation chapter 20, verses 12 through 15. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before Yahweh. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they would judge every man according to his works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Again, we see here that it's an individual judgment, if not a group judgment. It's not a family judgment. It is an individual judgment. Every man not found written in the book of life. It doesn't say anything about a group. But we're each going to be judged on our own merit, our own works, or what we did for Yahweh. Okay, and we can no way, in no way, borrow the righteous, righteousness from someone else. Just like the, the five virgin, foolish virgins wanted to do. We're not going to be able to do that. Every man is judged according to their, to their work. Each one is responsible for themselves. Messiah died for each of us. But each of us are responsible to the answer to answer the call of Yah Messiah. We are responsible for ourselves. Each person in this in this world in this, uh, is responsible for themselves. If someone commits a crime, they are responsible for themselves for what they did, and that's the way it is with Yahweh. We have to bear the marks of Yahweh. Galatians chapter 6, verse 17. From henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of Master Yahweh. Okay, Curi curious. Question. What does the word marks mean here? The word marks is, is a word stigma from a primary word. Uh, that is the prick, a mark, in size or punctured or punched for recognition of ownership. That is figuratively means a scar of service. So we, you see here when he says, "I bear the marks in my body, the marks of Yahweh Messiah." If you read the, the the definition, the Greek definition for this. You'll see the scars of service. He had to bear the scars of the service, his service for Yahweh Messiah. Okay? The Vine's Dictionary of New Testament Words defines this word marks as a tattooed mark or a mark burnt in like a brand. It's probable that the Apostle refers to the physical sufferings he had to endure since he began to proclaim Yahweh as the Messiah and Master. So that's the Vine's Dictionary of that New Testament word there. Now let's look at Luke chapter 14 verses 27 and 28. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counts the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it? Okay, so we see we have to bear, we have to uh, bear, we have to understand, we have to know whether we can bear the marks of Yahweh Messiah. We have to make that decision. Am I willing to bear the marks of Yahweh Messiah? Okay, and it said, and of course, if your person is building a, a company, they have to sit down and figure out if they can afford to make the company, to build the company, if they have the, the finances. Because, of course, you don't want to start a company 
and then all of a sudden you're not able to finish the finish the company start yeah you know, start the company and then not be able to continue with it that wouldn't do any good okay so Paul counted the cost we bear the mark of whatever enslaves us servants bear the mark of their master we should bear the mark of our master Yahweh Messiah you ever see someone who is who and it's sad and my wife and I have seen it enough a lot you see somebody who has been doing drugs or has has been drinking and they're so messed up or prostituting their body and you can tell they they bear the mark of whatever enslaves them if they're a prostitute you can look at them and know because they bear the mark of their ens enslavement if someone's been doing drugs it's the same thing they bear the marks of their enslavement and it's also someone who has been drinking let's look at matthew chapter 5 verses 13 and 14. you are the salt of the earth if the salt has lost its savior, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and be trodden under foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Okay, a few things here. The salt, ye are the salt of the earth. Also it says in the beginning of verse 14, ye are the light of the world. Okay, in verse 13, if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It's good for nothing. If we've lost the, 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 the burden of Yahweh Messiah, if we've lost bearing the mark of Yahweh Messiah, we're like that salt that has no savor. It's good for nothing. They be cast out, down and trodden underfoot. It continues that we are the light of the world. Yah Messiah wants us to be the light of the world. We are not to hide our light under a bushel. Now it reminds me of that, that song. We're not to hide our uh, light under a bushel or under a tree or under a, a, a bed or anything else. We have to let our light shine. The scriptures say that to let your light shine before men, that they might see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. See, Yahweh Messiah calls us to shine our light and shine our light bright, not just in a dim. You know, you have different settings for some lights. You have a dim and then you have a little bit brighter than you have real bright. Well, Yahweh wants our light, the light of Yahweh Messiah through us to bear, to brought, to, to be bright as a bright as it can be, and he wants us to set, set it up on a hill that it cannot be hid. He wants all the world to see his light in us. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse two. You are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. Okay, wow, we get that. We're, we're epistles written in, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. Do you know, if you're a believer, you should be able, people should know by looking at you, by the way you act, by the way you portray, uh, portray yourself, that you are a believer. That we are, if, if we, let me put it this way. If we're a believer and we're going out to a bar and coming out drunk, how much can our light shine? It can't. Okay? We have to make sure because if we imagine if, if we're a believer and we go into a bar and get drunk and come out drunk and stagger, as someone who isn't a believer but knows we are sees that. What kind of impression does that put on them? 
That that's that goes back to that scripture where it says that uh, we are the salt of the earth. And if our salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? And we're supposed to be a light unto the world. You see, people should be able to look at us and know that we are believers. The congregation is the fruit of Paul's labor. People could look at them and see the work that Paul had started. And we are, and that's what we are for Yahweh. A believer must, must ever have the name of Yahweh written on him. The name of Yahweh Messiah. We should be able to follow in his footsteps. 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 21 and 22. For even hereunto were you called, because Messiah also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. So we see here that we are to follow in his steps. We are to follow in the steps of Yahweh Messiah. Because he said that we he wanted us to do what he did. He said, in greater works, he told the apostles, in greater works will you do. So we're supposed to follow in his footsteps. Are we willing to bear the scars of Yahweh Messiah? What are some of the marks or scars that we're to bear? What are some of these marks or scars? Let's look at some. We'll look at scripture to go along with them. Our, our bears are back. Having compassion for the lost and bearing a heavy burdens. Galatians chapter 6 verse 2. Bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Messiah. Wow. Com have compassion for the lost and bear the heavy burdens. It tells us to bear one another's burdens. How about this one? Correct the believers when they stray. James chapter 5, verses 19 and 20. Brethren, if any of you do error from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save his soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. And this can fall under that one where we said it was to carry the burdens of, to bear the burdens of others. If a person is caught in an uh, error, then we're to con try to help convert them. We're supposed to, to help them get back on the right track, get back on the right path. Because maybe they got lost and they, they got off on a wrong uh, path. We, gotta, we have to gently, uh, with love, lead them back to the correct path. We also have to have compassion. On the poor. What have you done for others that you do for Yahweh Messiah? Matthew chapter 25 verses 34 through 36. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Having compassion on the poor, okay? This is what the, this is talking about. And Messiah explains it here. About being thirsty, and, and hunger, and all that. He's, and if you continue reading this a little further down... The apostles questioned him. They said, when have we done this? Done this? He said, if you've done it to the least of the brethren, you have done it unto me. So if we do it unto the brethren, we've done it unto Yahweh Messiah. As much as we do it for the brethren, we've done it for Yahweh Messiah. Now, we also have to have humility. Matthew chapter 23, verses 11 and 12. 
but he who is greatest among you shall be your servant and who's Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Okay, so we see here that if we exalt ourselves, lift ourselves up, say, look at me, look at what I've done, look at the, everything I can do, that we, we're going to be, Yahweh says we're going to be humbled. But he's going to bring us low. And that those who are humble, who don't make themselves, try to put themselves up on a pedestal, and say, look at me, look at all the stuff I've done. He will be exalted. The scriptures talk over and over and over again in the book of uh, Proverbs about uh, the humble. The, being humble. And you should go back and read those chapters. And highlight or underline every time we're talking about being humble or being humility in some kind of way. Okay, and the final one, doing good unto all men, Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we therefore, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Okay, so we see that we must do good unto all men, especially to those in the household of faith. We must bear the burdens of others, but we can't help others unless we help our, ourselves and are in the right relationship with Yahweh. In other words, we can't help somebody else unless we're right with Yahweh. Matthew chapter 7 verse 5 Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thy own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. What is it saying here, beam and, and mote? It's talking about things that we do. We have to see and correct ourselves. Judge, the scripture says somewhere, I don't know where, it says judgment starts with the household of faith. The judgment with us should start with us. We shouldn't be so quick to judge a brother or sister unless we ourselves unless we ourselves know that we are without fault. That's what it's saying here that we can't cast a beam out of our uh, our neighbor's eye or our, our brother's eye because we have a, a moat. We have a moat in our eye. We need to take, we have to make sure our hearts are right with Yahweh before we can help someone else. We can't cast out the beam from our own eye until we get where Yahweh Messiah. We have to be clothed in Yahweh Messiah, having been baptized unto his death. Galatians chapter 3, verse 27. For as many of you has been baptized into Messiah, have put on Messiah. So if we've been baptized on the Messiah, we put on Yah Messiah. So we see that we have to put on Yah Messiah. Okay, and final uh, scripture here, uh, Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Yahweh the Messiah were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as the Messiah was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also shall walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Okay, let's step back for just a second here. The previous screen. Romans chapter 6, verse 1 says, Should we... What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? 
Verse 2 says, By no means, how are we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So you see, we need to shed off or take off sin. We need to make sure they were put we put on Yah Messiah. If we've been planted under Yah Messiah in baptism, we should all in the likeness of his we should also in the likeness of his resurrection. Just like okay, we if we're baptized in Yah Messiah, we are gonna be like him. We are going to make heaven our home as long as we stay in Yah Messiah. And that is the key. You can become children of, Elohim, of Yahweh if you believe that Yahweh Messiah is the son of Elohim. If you're willing to repent of your sins, confess his name, and be baptized for the washing away of your sins. And that's what it requires. Of course, as others, we have to stay saved. It's not just a matter of getting saved. It's that we need to stay saved. Okay, we, getting baptized, taking on Yahweh, repenting. I mean, this is in the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Repent and bat, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahweh Messiah, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we see we need to repent and be baptized in the name of Yahweh Messiah. And then we, we had to, for the washing away of our sins, and we should receive, will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. But then it's required that we stay saved. We have to stay in a saved position. So we see here tonight the three bears. The three bears of Galatians chapter 6. Yahweh's Learning Channel thanks you for watching this video. We hope you were edified by this content. Reach out to us with the information provided on screen or you may click on the links to view more of our videos. Please subscribe to be notified of new uploads. Until next time, Shalom.